$100,000 net worth by age 60. We invest. We die gun. Now we do it. We sing. <laughs> Credit cards. We have credit cards. We hack. I don't care what people think of me. I don't give a fuck. We don't give a fuck. We are woke capital. Try and guess my age. Fun game. It may not be immediately obvious. And no, I didn't drink the blood of a thousand virgins. I seem to be one of those people that's weirdly youthful. Must be all those NFTs I've acquired. But I am in fact an ancient old man when it comes to the young blood coursing through this space right now. Because when you open your ears and listen, that is the sound of hormones, underage drinking, chap snatting, and TikToking. So much TikToking. Because whether you like it or not, teenagers are here and they're starting to make their presence felt bigly, muchly, well, a lot. So in this episode, we will bring you some of the youthful stories that collided with the rapidly declining physical manifestation that is my meat sack body. From teen TikTokers to NFT artists to out and out thieves. So set eye rolls to stun. Demand Wi Fi everywhere. And load every last goddamn emoji you can find because this is the Wi Fi. The five. Now leave me the f alone and this is my music. Mum, come on! Roll the titles. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about my plan to become a millionaire. Become a millionaire. So, teenagers, like, what are we supposed to make of this? The standard response is to assume that they know nothing, that they're reckless, they're pumped full of hormones, they're smelly, and they're idiots. Cringe AF, mega cringe, toppy cringe, booyah biscuit. But is that correct? We are wise and we must know better. But do we? It seems ages ago now, but the power of teenagers in financial markets, which are traditionally dominated by Wall Street titans, really manifested itself during the Wall Street bets GameStop short squeeze. And of course, COVID has also contributed. Recessions tend to redistribute wealth towards the asset-owning class. But now with apps like Robinhood and its low fees, we started to see teenage investors sharing information on TikTok, Instagram, Reddit, and Discord. If you clicked on this video, you're probably a teenager looking to get into the world of stock market investing, or maybe you're a parent watching this for your kid. If that's the case, this video might be a little bit awkward for you to watch because I'm going to be telling you guys my personal experience investing in the stock market as a teenager, all the way from convincing your parents to even let you start investing to some strategies I recommend teenagers try out in the stock market. And while you ponder about the value of social media platforms and finance, Let's hear from our sponsors. Don't let high gas costs keep you out of Ethereum. A balance of the gas optimized vault architecture makes trading cheaper than anywhere else. Liquidity providers can optimize their fee earnings using the dynamic fee system that automatically adjusts to market conditions. You can also use asset managers to lend out idle assets, dramatically increasing your capital efficiency. Because Balancer is an open platform for flexible, automated markets, you can choose from stable pools or weighty pools. And in the future, more designs will be created that they don't even know about yet. Check it out at balancer.fi. Avalanche is a leading third generation layer one blockchain that has a flourishing ecosystem of more than 200 projects live, with over 100 in the pipeline as well. The latest launch of the Avalanche Rush DeFi incentive program is the largest to date of its kind, with flagship DeFi protocols like Ava, Curve, and Sushi leading the charge as they deploy on Avalanche. The Avalanche platform is fast, low cost, and super easy to use. If you're a DeFi user on Ethereum, you can quickly and easily move your assets over using the brand new Avalanche bridge and can explore the ecosystem of dApps. Head to ecosystem.avax.network to get started today. If these all succeed, then I could be making $10,000 a month or more just from that. But in reality, most will fail. So if we want to step down from our lofty podiums and understand teenagers in crypto, first we must look at, I can't believe I'm saying the word, 
Finfluencers. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Did we really need a portmanteau there? No. So here's one, Spencer Hochhaus with his half a million followers. What's going on you guys, it's Spencer here. If you're a teen like me looking to invest in your first stock, you found the perfect video. Oh, here's another one, Humphrey Yang. He's a bit older, but has many, many followers. And he's stepping up to the content buffet with such gems as this. Hey guys, it's Humphrey. So today I wanted to talk all about the factors to consider for Bitcoin to get to 100K and level up beyond its all-time high of around 66K, which it just recently hit yesterday. Yes, these are the influencers. Yeah. Now during the pandemic, users of TikTok and Instagram have seen their feeds rapidly pivot towards finance-themed content. And of course, this makes perfect sense. One of the most common YouTube strategies is to trend jack jump on a hot topic, ride a trend wave, and enjoy the clicks. We don't do that here. We've definitely looked at it. Well, we've done it a couple of times. So we have this generation of disenchanted teenagers woke enough to understand this world doesn't care about them one little bit, but young enough to believe that they can actually do something about it. And of course, turning to their favorite platforms to get the lowdown. Digging through all the material out there, it's telling how often you hear deep disdain for the financial reality of traditional markets. Fuck the system! Says it's fucking rig, mate! But where previous generations might have just buckled up, saddled themselves with crippling university debt like the young man behind the camera here, and got on with crawling slowly through worsening job prospects like the young man behind the camera here, and one financial crisis after another, Gen Z and below, what are we calling them now? Gen <laughs> realized that many many, many tiny little fish could whip up one hell of a vortex and accomplish something. At least until Wall Street, Robin Hood, etc. decided they didn't like being on the receiving end, got seriously butthurt and switched the whole system off. Aw, oh, poor lambs. But that movement didn't die, however. Robin Hood might have been the unwitting catalyst for an army of new teen financial experts to pour into crypto, NFTs, and DeFi. And here's the thing about teenagers. They don't give a fuck about you, your reputation, or what university you went to. They also share information at light speed. They have plenty of free time to scour Instagram, YouTube, or wherever the latest alpha is. And they also exhibit a kind of endearing belief that they can just do stuff better because who else is gonna help them? Oh yeah, they also don't have to pay rent. And some, as the saying goes, are just cringe A to the motherfucking A. I mean, F, I mean, just watch. If I were to give you guys any advice when it comes to long-term investing. I lost so much money. But there are some out there that do kind of, I don't know, feel like, well, okay. Hey everyone, it's Caleb Williams here, the CEO of Better Wealth, and our whole mission as, as a company is to unlock intentional living by helping um, families and entrepreneurs take back control over their money. And I wanted to take a moment to highlight some of my good friends at Team Financial Freedom. I am so incredibly proud of the work that they're doing with their blog, with their podcast, the community that, they're, um, that they've started and that they're continuing to develop. And just the the topics about money, like there's not a lot of young people that are having good places to learn and meet other young people that are focused on financial freedom, on healthy habits. So this is the teen financial freedom. The journey to financial freedom starts here. And you can join the group of teens dedicated to achieving financial freedom. Here they say it's a personal finance blog run by teens who are on a mission to equip their peers with the knowledge resources and understanding they need to become financially free for the rest of their lives. If you imagine 15, 16 years old saying, I'm going to be financially free for 70, 80 years. I mean, that's, I was never thinking about stuff like that. You can go and have a look at the team on the about page and see these people, these teenagers. There's Jacob, Terry, Danny, Ruby, Ian, and Chase. Ruby says, my name is Ruby. I'm a 16 year old entrepreneur. My name is Ian and I'm a 15 year old from the Bay Area. I love the puzzle of personal finance. My name is Danny, I'm a 14 year old in the Bay Area. I'm interested in psychology, business, personal. Who writes like this? If I was an 18 year old or a 16 year old and, and I was writing this, I'd be like, yeah, I like girls and football. That'd be it. I don't understand 
how these teenagers can be this woke about finance. And I'm almost sad in a way that they feel like they have to be because there's a bunch of other stuff you can be concerned about in your teens. You don't have to be a business genius at that age. But what do they sound like? Well, we can go to the podcast section and actually find out what these teens sound like, what they say. And it's, it's interesting. Welcome to the Teen Financial Freedom Podcast. Teen Financial Freedom is a personal finance blog run by teens who are on a mission to equip their peers with the knowledge, resources, and understanding they need to become financially free for the rest of their lives. Today we'll be talking about replacing your bad habits with a good one and breaking up with your bad habits. A lot of us, including me and Terry, you know, we all have bad habits as teenagers and it can be hard to get rid of them and try to move on from them. It's normal. Like if you have, if you have a bad habit, that's like totally okay. Cause you all do like whether it's spending too much time on your phone or procrastinating a lot or anything else, you know, it doesn't matter because you all have it. It all feels weirdly wholesome. I actually found myself rooting for these plucky guys and girls. Thing is, as we know, there is actually a flip side to all this. There is a ton of garbage information out there and some pretty horrifying stories to go with it, like Alexander Cairns, a 20-year-old student who actually committed suicide when Robin Hood put a hold on his account showing that he was 730 grand in the red and then he needed to pay over 170 grand in the next couple of days. And the question of the guardrails in place to screen unsophisticated investors has probably not been given enough attention. But when you think about stories like this through the lens of the insanity we put up with in crypto, then it should make you think a bit. It's all well and good having a completely open permissionless system, but the wreckage is real. But now, looking back, it is clear that teenagers did indeed move from Robin Hood to crypto. And we'll look at some examples shortly, but it is worth mentioning that youngsters have long been at the forefront of technological innovation. We might think of people like Charles Hoskinson, and Emin Gunsira, these lofty academics, but really it's the kids that make shit happen. Mark Andreessen was barely into his 20s when he created the web browser, and this lizard puppet was only 19 when he created his world-beating data collection platform. And of course, how could we forget this young man who at the age of 19 came up with what has since become the most significant blockchain platform ever? Sorry, Bitcoin Maxis, but it has. But I've got a gun. I don't care. So let's take a look at some teens who jumped onto my radar in crypto. And of course, we start with Rary Capital, the yield maximizing robo advisor that takes risk management, allowing users to generate yield through a combination of strategies. 1.1 billion in TVL, a brand new protocol called Fuse that supports isolated interest rate pools for lending and borrowing any asset you like. And it's run by teenagers. Teenagers, 1.1 billion. Forbes writer, Rory Murray was moved to say that maybe these were the adults in the room. Now they were hacked back in May and there was a bit of a stink around it suggesting that this was a slap back for perceived youthful arrogance towards yearn finance. Oh, the disrespect of calories. But none of that should distract from the fact that these are basically kids. Over a billion in TVL. When I was their age, I was trying to figure out how to put my shoes on. Now, two exploits stood out in the last two weeks as much for how they went down as for who was behind them. And we start with this. The ultimate deadline has not been met. In the minutes before the deadline elapsed, Zeta Zero has made changes to his accounts that have made us realize at the last minute that the attacker is significantly younger than we thought. Index creates tokens that track market indexes, and the project was hacked for $16 million earlier in the month. It was a classic flash loan exploit, overloading the protocol with new assets, lowering the price of index tokens, and allowing the attacker to mint new ones and then cash them out. However, the attacker might have done a stellar job on the exploit, but they'd done a less than stellar job of covering their tracks, and the team figured out who it was. First up, they offered a 50 grand white hack reward, but the hacker declined. So that brings us now to update number three on hackmd.io. Here, the team present all the evidence to support their claim. Among it, references to a personal website that they claim doxes the hacker and their age, which they claim is 18 years old. The website is offline now, but thanks to the Wayback Machine, we can actually find a cached version from the 19th of October that looks like this. 18 years old. 
Now we weren't sure whether we should show this properly, so we have pixelated it, but it does raise some strange questions here. So look, at this point, this is conjecture, and Index must have been extremely confident in their investigation to go this far in posting the information. And at the bottom of the post are these words. We hope this information will be useful, and as mentioned previously, we have instructed our personal attorney to forward the information to law enforcement. Now, this is a little tricky, because it's hard to know whether this sets a dangerous precedent, or whether it's another example of this community's highly effective self-policing mechanism. But Zeta Zeros, the Twitter account of the hacker, has been active in recent days arguing the case that the exploit had lain vulnerable for over a year and that they had simply taken advantage of a weakness in the code. And he goes on to argue that the losers were butthurt and disproportionate. And doesn't that sound familiar? The truth is, there's nothing nice about being exploited. But the truth also is that when we interact with a smart contract, it really is on us to determine whether that interaction is safe. And of course, the hacker makes the point, anyone could audit that code, anyone could see the same exploit. If they didn't, well, that's on them. And there's no doubt, indexed have had their pride seriously dented and the threat of doxing and law enforcement is an extremely big stick to be waving around. There is also a certain amount of hypocrisy in lambasting Robin Hood and Wall Street as the bad guys, when this is the fallback if things don't go the way you want. Who is in the wrong here? Well, I know this for sure. Our ethics are on trial here. Quis custodiet ipsos custodies. Now, Zeta Zeros might have done a poor job of covering their tracks, but our next teen tyrant didn't give two solitary fig rolls who knew who they were. So Creature Toads is a crossover project between creatures and cryptodes, two projects that have enjoyed a great deal of community goodwill these last few strange months. But things got really weird, as the hacker used a webhook to trick one of the main moderators and gain privileges to post in the Discord, which he did, posting a link to a fake website where unsuspecting users aped in and sent in around 86 ETH. The website then changed to a message saying, This was a disgust and planned rug by administrators. Do not trust creature toads in the future. But then eight hours later, the attacker returned the fund. And then what did he do? Jumped on Twitter spaces and revealed, oh, yeah, he's 17. I just pulled up the person that is allegedly responsible for this. The account is called her H W E double R. Um, yeah, we tracked to this Twitter account and I called out some tweets on it and after that uh, there was some activity on that account so that's how we knew the person was listening. Then I spoke to the person directly um, asking if the person was willing to return the funds, do the right thing. Um, and it turns out this person did do that. So let's just keep that in mind that the person did return the funds right now um, and is on stage. Yeah, How old are you? Man, and, uh, I'm 17. I, I'm 17. Holy shit! So whatever you might think of all of this, if there's one good thing to come out of it, hopefully more attention will go towards providing moderators adequate training to deal with malicious actors. And those who aped in might, just might, think twice before doing so again. Although I, that's not true, is it? That's not gonna happen. I think most people in the NFT space are degenerates, like really degenerates. I, I don't care what people think about me. I don't give a fuck. Like you can think whatever, bro. Like sure, yeah, it's like Roblox. So what, bro? Who the fuck took 300K and gave it back? It was me. So you guys need to calm your fucking horses and like stop saying I'm a fucking retard or some shit. Now, a month or so back, we had a guest on our NFT show who called himself 12 year old with a credit card. And no, he wasn't 12, but he was a teenager and was actively looking for ways to build value into cryptos creating tools and websites that created mystique around the rarest items. Hi, I'm 12 year old with a credit card. Uh, so yeah, I, I just acquire NFTs that I vibe with and I really like the crypto toads. Is it crypto toads or is it cryptoads? Or cryptoads, I guess. So, yeah, I so did research. I'm a big Grimplin fan. Um, I own some of his early stuff. You guys like Grimplin? Yeah, man. Well, I, yeah, I mean, the, you, you know how hard this space is to keep track of. But, like, 
when did your NFT journey start? Because like you, you've got other stuff to occupy you, like TikTok. Like, how did you get into this? I, I don't know. What else would I do? But a few months back, a 12-year-old really did make a splash in NFTs with the Weird Whales collection. Benjamin Ahmed from London made a collection of pixel whales and sold them for £290,000, around $400,000. Not even a teen yet, but featured on the BBC, on CNBC, and on Pomp TV. How did you first come across Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, etc.? So I got interested in NFTs earlier this year. My dad's friend, who's been in Bitcoin for a very long time, bought a rare Pepe, which is one of the few NFT collections on the Bitcoin network, for $27,000. And I instantly became fascinated that someone was willing to spend this much money on a JPEG. So I did some research into NFTs. And then another one, one of the standout collections from the new generative art platform, Gen.Art, came from a 14-year-old Indian woman by the name Laya Mathishkara, called A. Merkel. It's dark, monochromatic, and striking. And it turns out Leia's actually a bit of a prodigy. She dropped her first NFT on Wazir X when she was just 13 years old. And the film eventually became India's entry to the 16th Busan International Kids and Youth Film Festival. And listening to Leia speak, it's hard not to be struck by just how mature she actually sounds. When I started with digital art, I was able to bring my uh, imaginations into real life, into a real uh, 3D simulation. And that was cool and that was really interesting. I was able to do things that I can do in real life as well as a simulation in 3D. And that was interesting. Uh, so when I uh, started uh, learning more and more about digital art, I uh, eventually came to know about NFTs and uh, and I and I and I saw everyone talking about it, and I thought, why why wouldn't I start with it and see where it goes? And um, one Sunday, me and my sister sat together, and uh, we um, we went on the web and we searched about NFTs, and and uh, we went to a lot of videos, and then we came to a conclusion what NFT was, and we thought, why don't we mint one art as an NFT and see where it goes? And that one Sunday changed uh, uh, my my life, changed my family's life and I'm pretty sure that made a big impact that one day made a big impact. So what are we to make of all this? Well, When I was going through the first pains of working life we were just starting to hear about the quarter life crisis where young adults felt the pressure of needing to be successful earlier and earlier in their lives but all of that has shifted back even further now. Now teens feel this and what do we call it the eighth life crisis? I have no idea. Be more successful faster sooner because all the tools and the information you need is out there. And it used to be that you had to do in-person apprenticeships to learn life skills, like the person behind this camera. Now you just get on TikTok. Now I have a daughter, and she will soon be 10 years old. Gosh, how can you have a daughter that's 10 years old? Well, I do. I'm very aware that we, her parents, have a duty to school her in finance, and crypto, and indeed NFTs, provide a pretty compelling roadmap for a more enlightened view of money. But I think about all you savages out there, and the only thing I can think of is protecting her. Now there must be a happy medium somewhere. The kids behind teen financial freedom seem well-intentioned enough, but it's a short hop from Finfluencer to Fin Fuck You promoting the wrong thing. It's tough. It's an open permissionless system, but sometimes the precocious are just pricks with big mouths who saw some videos online. And if they're all pulling information from the same sources, after a while, they all just end up sounding the same. Where's the innovation in that? Now this is just one of the issues with the current social learning circle jerk. True originals are ignored. Everybody's informed, but with the same shit as everyone else. So me, I now look for the outliers. So does that mean that you should completely ignore me? Absolutely. Still, this is the world we are in right now. And I keep coming back to a call I had with Trevor McFedries, the founder of Friends with Benefits and the creator of Lil Michaela. How do women run popular culture? Teenage girls dictate popular culture. And I think, you know, you've seen this shift even in like investor attention from Silicon Valley, which had a very similar kind of uh, adoption curve, where you remember like, you know, 10, 20 years ago, it was kind of the gadget guy, 50 year old nerdy guy who loves his gadgets, was kind of at the frontier of what was happening in technology. And now really it's, it's 13 year old girls. It's, you know, it was like, you look at musically, it was like, you know, eight, nine year old girls dancing on, on, on camera. And that became TikTok, you know, the, the biggest platform. Um, 
I, I think you know, we're going to see similar things on, in crypto. Uh, we're actively at FWB trying to figure out how to kind of like find those angles and those edge cases. Um, you know, I'm a big believer of status games to find a bunch of these things. And so if you can figure out new ways for people who are kind of underutilized in the space to achieve status, they'll usually migrate there. And given the excessive male dominance of this space up till now, a teenage girl takeover might be the best thing that could ever happen. Ooh, think about that as I tell you that this was the Defiant. If you want to be successful, there's no better day than today to start planning your future and getting on the path to success. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching and subscribe for more content. I've got some advice for you, son. Use a spell check. Subscribe with a B, not a C, as in see ya! Boom!